Good afternoon, brothers and sisters. Today is Wednesday, the 15th of July, 2020. Once again, my name is Matthew Gill. I am prophet and first elder of the restored branch of Jesus Christ. Firstly, before uh, I go into today's lesson, which you can see on the board, is quite well laid out. Um, I just want to say a few things. Firstly, I want to thank everybody who has um, contributed their questions to us over the last couple of months. I want to thank the people who have subscribed to us on YouTube and I want to thank those people who have sent us encouraging and nice messages to help us to understand the lessons that we want to teach and also the things that you want to hear from me. Can I just say that my aim, and I've been doing this now for a couple of months, is to bring you a, an overall view of what the restored branch of Jesus Christ believe in. Um, I'm doing these from my home in my dining room, um, from my home in Derbyshire, and um, I decided to do it in a relaxed environment, uh, in my casuals, rather than getting into a suit and a tie. I wear a suit and a tie when I give a sermon on a Sunday because the sacrament is laid out. I don't wear a suit and a tie to do these lessons because that's not what I want to do. I don't want to give off an atmosphere of uh, hierarchical uh, nonsense. Um, I want to be able to have a conversation with you and the same would apply if you knocked on my front door and came into my house. I wouldn't run upstairs quickly and put a shirt and a tie on and a suit jacket and come back downstairs and have a chat with you. I'd chat with you the way I'm dressed right now. We'd have a chat and we would use the scriptures and we would talk about the things that, that set us apart and the things that we come together on. So for all those uh, people, um, and there are only a few, so, you know, the majority of people are accepting these videos for what they are. But for those people who are saying that, well, as the prophet of the church, you should be setting an example wearing a, a shirt and a tie and a jacket. Well, I do that on a Sunday because I'm inviting the Lord into the situation with the sacrament laid out. But I don't do it in these situations because the sacrament's not out. Um, I'm having a conversation with you in my home, in my dining room, and I want that to be a relaxed thing. So, um, and if you are obsessed with shirt, tie and suit, then there's an organisation set up for just you. It's called the LDS Church. They wear a suit, a tie and a jacket for everything. Uh, they still talk as a nonsense, but they wear a lovely suit, shirt and a tie and um, they talk rubbish. Uh, but if that's all that you're interested in is what people look like, then I'm sure that organisation will be really, really great for you. If you want a conversation about the restored gospel, the restoration movement, and what it is that we in the Restored Branch believe, then you'll watch these videos and you'll accept them for what they are. Um, I haven't claimed to be something I'm not, and I won't ever do that. So welcome to my home. Welcome to this lovely, relaxed, uh, conversational environment. Um, so that's the rant over with. Um, so uh, today's lesson is going to be, and I've touched on this subject uh, before in the doctrine of Christ but I've had a few messages this week about baptism um, especially for uh, a couple of people who have asked um, if I was to join your church whether well, I need to be rebaptized. and um, I've answered those questions to them personally but I wanted to just go over uh, why baptism is so important to us in the restored branch of Jesus Christ now I'm going to be using I'm going to be using, again, the Book of Mormon Restored Covenant Edition. That's what we use within the Restored Branch of Jesus Christ. And um, to help my LDS friends, if they want to be called friends, if my help my LDS friends, that I've, I was given this uh, conversion table by a dear friend of mine, Pat, uh, James McKay, a couple of years ago now. And it converts our LDS scripture into... Uh, LDS uh, scripture from the Book of Mormon which is why I'm able to give you LDS uh, Book of Mormon uh, references for you to go away and look at in your own due time 
so basically the restored Commodins edition is what I'm going to be using today as reference. Um, before I kick off on this, um, my son has been very kind and wrote the uh, contact details for the church if you want to get in contact with us. Uh, you can see those, info at restoredbranch.com, that's the direct email to me. Uh, Twitter, Facebook and YouTube, which is where we have our presence, uh, Restore Branch. And what he hasn't put down is uh, our website um, at restoredbranch.com. So, www.restoredbranch.com. Um, but anyway, so, as you can see, I've picked out uh, five scriptures that I think... Uh, represent why we have baptism within the restored branch of Jesus Christ and, and, and really why we have baptism uh, within the wider restoration movement. Now, I freely admit that um, within that movement people look upon baptism in, a, in slightly different ways um, and people use the tool of baptism in slightly different ways. Um, so uh, I'm just going to be talking to you today about why the restored branch of Jesus Christ uh, used uh, baptism in the specific way that we do. So let's let's first turn to Moroni 6 1. Uh, and it's the same reference, as far as I am aware, it is the same reference in the LDS uh, Book of Mormon as well. So I haven't put that one down. So Moroni 6 1 it says, Behold, elders, priests, and teachers were baptized, and they were, and they were not baptized, save they brought forth fruit, met that they were worthy of it. Neither did they receive any unto baptism, save they came forth with a broken heart and a contrite spirit, and witnessed unto the church that they truly repented of all their sins. Okay. Um, and none were received unto baptism, save they took upon them the name of Christ, having a determination to serve him to the end. Now this, this scripture in Moroni 6, 1, I think is important, because it shows that before we are baptised, we need to approach the ordinance of baptism in the correct manner. We need to be approaching baptism with a contrite heart and a broken spirit. In other words, we need to be repentant. We need to become repentant before we enter into the waters of baptism. Um, so it is a process. And, and Moroni was quite pointed here when he says, Behold, elders, priests and teachers were baptised, and they were not baptised, save they brought forth fruit, met that they were worthy of it. So they had to prove to the church that they were worthy to be baptised, that they had indeed repented, and come to the process of baptism with a broken heart and a contrite spirit ready to be received into the waters of baptism. And that's all we ask people in the restored branch of Jesus Christ to do, to approach the ordinance of baptism as a way of laying down your past life and taking up a new one. Uh, approaching the ordinance of baptism not as something that we, we do just to receive membership, which, by the way, um, I don't believe in. Uh, we receive baptism for the remission of sins and to take upon ourselves the spirit, the name of Jesus Christ and receive the Holy Spirit. We do not receive baptism as, uh, as um, a, a mechanism to enter into a religious organisation. That's done in a different process. That's done by confirmation and by sustaining vote of members. It is not done by receiving baptism. Baptism and membership should not be confused in the same breath. That's what we believe in the restored branch of Jesus Christ. Okay, now I know that's different from other areas of the restoration, but I'm telling you what we believe in the restored branch of Jesus Christ. Let's go to Moroni 8, 29. Moroni 8, 29. And he says this, he says, And the first fruits of repentance is baptism. And baptism cometh by faith unto the fulfilling the commandments, and the fulfilling the commandments bringeth remission of sins. And the remission of sins bringeth meekness and lowliness of heart, and because of meekness and lowliness of heart cometh the visitation of the Holy Ghost, which comforteth with hope and with perfect love, 
where at which love endureth by diligence unto prayer until the end shall come when all the saints shall dwell with God. So this is a, and yet again, Moroni is outlining a process about how we approach baptism. So the first fruits of repentance are baptism. So yet again, we need to be repentant. We need to be contrite. We need to be penitent before we enter into the waters of baptism. We need to be able to show the Lord that we are we are sorry for the things that we have committed in our lives. And we need to approach baptism as such. Baptism cometh by faith unto the fulfilling of the commandments. And the fulfilling of the commandments bring us a remission of sins through the baptism itself. And the remission of sins bringeth meekness and lowliness of heart. And because of meekness and lowliness of heart cometh the visitation of the Holy Ghost. There's a process. Come with a contrite heart and a broken spirit and a penitent soul. Enter the waters of baptism to be cleansed from all wickedness and sin. Out of the waters of baptism you will now fulfil the commandments. And you're bringing forth this remission of sin. And it brings forth meekness and lowliness of heart. Therefore allows the Holy Spirit to rest upon you. And the Comforter will fill you with hope and a perfect love. And that love will endure forever and ever unto prayer. So basically what he's saying is, don't come into the waters of baptism, be baptised, receive the Holy Ghost and then do nothing else. We need to, it's, a, it's an ongoing process. We need to be prayerful, we need to study, we need to be mindful of the things that we do. Okay, we're back. Uh, so I was saying that baptism is a process, okay? So we need to approach it with a penitent soul. Then we go down into the waters of baptism. We're cleansed from all our sin and iniquity. We come out of the water clean and pure because we've fulfilled the commandment saying that we need to be baptised in order to enter the kingdom of heaven. And then with that with that lowliness and meekness of heart that you should have when you come out of baptism, you receive the Holy Ghost. But that Holy Ghost can only stay with us if we are prayerful and study and mindful, Okay. So there is a process. We should never forget the process. Okay, and then we go to uh, Moroni 8, 11, 20. Okay, now this is about, this is a subject um, that I've had conversations with people about. Um, not, this, not, not recently, but I have had conversations with other people from other parts of Christendom about... Uh, baptism for children so I wanted to include that in the lesson so let's go and see what Moroni has to say here he says and I'll, I'll read the whole lot so behold I say unto you that these that this thing shall ye teach repentance and baptism unto they which are accountable and capable of committing sin okay yea teach parents that they must repent and be baptized repent and be baptized and humble themselves as their little children, and they shall be saved with their little children. And their children need no repentance, neither baptism. Behold, baptism is unto repentance, to the fulfilling of the commandments, unto the remission of sin. But little children are alive in Christ, even from the foundation of the world. If not so, God is a partial God, and also a changeable being, and a respecter of persons. Well, how many little children have died without baptism, he asks. Wherefore, if little children could not be saved without baptism, these must have gone to an endless hell. Behold, I say unto you, that he that supposeth that little children needeth baptism is in the gall of bitterness, and in the bonds of iniquity, for he have neither faith, hope, nor charity. Wherefore, should be cut off while in that thought, he must go down to hell. For awful is the wickedness to suppose that God saveth one child because of baptism, and another must perish because he hath no baptism. Woe be unto him that shall pervert the ways of the Lord after this manner, for they shall perish except they repent. Behold, I speak with boldness, having authority from God, for I fear not what man can do. For perfect love casteth out all fear, and I am filled with charity, which is everlasting love. Wherefore all children are alike unto me, Wherefore I love children with a perfect love, and they are like and the partakers of salvation. For I know that God is not a partial God, neither a changeable being, but he is an unchangeable from eternity to eternity. Little children cannot repent. Wherefore it is awful wickedness to deny the pure mercies of God unto them. For they are all alive in him because of his mercy. And the mercy, of course, is the tone. So, this, this scripture here, scripture here
is put there to remind us that little children who have not reached the age of accountability, and we know what that age of accountability is because it's in the Doctrine and Covenants, it's the age of eight. So little children need not be baptised because they can't sin. And Moroni says it's an abomination to think such way. Because if we believe that God is a, a changeable God, then he can do anything he wants. He says in here, he says, he says it would be a, a partial God and also a changeable being and a respecter of persons. We know that God is the same yesterday, today and forever. Which is why, looking at other parts of the Restoration Movement, when they change things, when they change ordinances and they change theologies to suit the situations in which they live. They are man-made changes. They are not from God. God does not lay down a commandment here and then because of uh, worldly circumstances change it to fit into society. He never does that. God says A and he means A all the way through. He doesn't say A and then B. He, sh he says this is the way it's got to be. This is the way baptism is. This is the way it's always going to be. It's not going to change. Those that change them within the movement, those churches and organisations that change things all the time, they are doing them out of man-made changes. They are not from God because God is what? He's unchangeable. He's the same yesterday, today and forever as Moroni says. So we know little children... Who have, before they've reached the age of accountability, do not need to be baptised. Now, I shoved that in there just because I wanted to make sure that everyone knows that restored branch of Jesus Christ do not baptise children before the age of accountability. All right, so let's look at Third Nephi. Third Nephi. Now, this is this is this is Christ when he visits the Nephites. Let's go to fourteen. Third Nephi fourteen three, and it says this. Gone too far. Third Nephi fourteen three, it says, and come unto me and be baptized in my name, that ye may receive a remission of your sins and be filled with the Holy Ghost, that ye may be numbered with my people which are the house of Israel. Okay, so what commandment is the Lord giving us here? He's saying, come unto me. So come unto me. The way we come unto Christ with a broken heart and a contrite spirit, being penitent, and be baptised in my name, which is what we do when we baptise, we baptise in the name of Jesus Christ, that ye may receive a remission of your sins. People are baptised for the remission of their sins. Okay, all right. And then they will be filled with the Holy Ghost and they will be numbered against, uh, amongst my people. All right, so Alma 3 is going to Alma 3, 108. I'm rifling through these because uh, it's expedient that I do that so that you may understand what the Lord expects of us. And he says in uh, Alma 3, 108, which is Alma 5, 56, my LDS friends, I speak by way of command unto you that belong to the church. And unto those which do not belong to the church, I speak by way of invitation, saying, Come, and be baptised unto repentance, that ye also may be partakers of the fruit of the tree of life. The invitation is to all men, when I say men, I'm talking about mankind, to come unto Christ with a broken heart and a contrite spirit and a penitent attitude, so that you may receive baptism by immersion for the remission of sins and afterwards receive the gift of the Holy Ghost so that you may be saved in the kingdom of God. Let's not forget, brothers and sisters, the only way to the kingdom of God is through baptism. We spoke about this when we were talking about the doctrine of Christ. Baptism is the only way. If you are not baptised, you will not get into the kingdom of God. You need to be baptised. Now, for the people who ask me, well, I've already been baptised once 
in this church and I've already had this I'm coming to join your church what did Joseph Smith say what did Joseph Smith say in the Doctrine and Covenants that it was necessary for a person to be rebaptized into the Church of Christ you cannot take an ordinance done by another church and bring it into another church within the movement. You have to be baptised by that church again. And the Doctrine and Covenants is explicit on that. It is explicit on that. You have to be rebaptized. That is the law. Okay? Now, I know that there are loads of people in the movement that do baptisms for lots of different reasons. People can get rebaptized. People do baptisms for the dead. People do all kinds of different ordinances. I'm just talking about the ordinance that will get you saved. And we in the restored branch of Jesus Christ believe firmly in baptism. That it is not, and let me, let, for us, I'm not talking to anybody else, for the restored branch of Jesus Christ, this is not, this is not a tool by which you become a member of our church. It is a tool by which you may be uh, forgiven of sin, washed clean of your sin, and, and, and that you may therefore go into the walk of Christ. Membership comes after, after that. It comes through confirmation. It comes through the, the vote of the church. It comes through the, comes through the sustaining of those church members to agree to, to, for you to become a member of the church. Of, it, is of course, it is, of course, a process that we take because most people that get baptised for the remission of sins in any church end up predominantly becoming members of that church. But you are not baptised to become a member of any church. Now, I used to be a member of the LDS church and I served a mission. And um, one of the things that we would tell people, and I don't have them to hand. Uh, oh, I do actually. In these, the, the, these used to go around with every missionary in the LDS church. They don't have them anymore. They, it's again, they've changed something. Uh, and you used to do discussions, one, two, three, four, five, etc. And in those discussions, you would tell people that once you're baptised, you become a member of the church. That's what you were doing. You were baptising people into the church. That's why you ranked up your numbers. How many baptisms have you done this month? How many people have you brought into the church? And although baptism does end up being that process that people do become members of the church, it is not a tool by which you become a member. Okay? It is purely and simply for you to walk with Christ and to be forgiven of your sins so that you may enter the kingdom of heaven. All right? So that's what we in the restored branch of Jesus Christ believe baptism is. That's why we believe it is an important institution. Now, uh, apart from my youngest, all of my children have been baptised. Um, my youngest isn't old enough yet. And when he reaches the age of accountability, we will have a chat. We will have a, a father and son interview or a chat. And we will discuss about what he knows about baptism what he knows about Jesus Christ, what he knows about sin and repentance. And if he is ready, then he will be baptised. If he is not ready, then he will wait. One of the things I don't like about a lot of um, baptisms is um, people reach the age of eight and the first thing we do is get them in the water, we get them in the water, we get them in the water, without really these children understanding what they're getting in the water for. And I think it's in really important that, that as parents and as leaders of movements or branches or churches, whatever you call yourself, we need to make sure that all those people who are baptised, whether they're our children, whether they're our friends' children or relatives, know and understand exactly what they're getting baptised for. But it's okay to be baptised. But Jesus says you cannot be saved in ignorance. And I really do believe that. If you don't understand what you're getting baptised for, it is irrelevant to you. So before we start going around rushing people to baptism, just so we can look good, uh, numbers, you know, how many baptisms have you had in your church? Oh, we've had 5,000. How many have you kept? Two. I mean, was not, there was really no point in doing the 5,000 in the first place then, was there? We're looking for quality over quantity. Now, I'm not about quantity. We're probably one of the smallest churches in the restoration movement. I'm about quality. 
If we get quality, we get quality. And my children aren't going to be forced into baptism until they're ready. Well, not, they're, going be, they're not going to be forced at all. They're not going to be baptised until they're ready. Okay? So that's something else we need to take into consideration. I'm more than happy to discuss this with people. If you've got any questions on this subject matter, please feel free to email me um, and then we can talk about them. Now, my next video will hopefully be a question and answer session because I've got so many questions from people that I need to go through and pick out. Um, so that's going to be interesting. I'm hopefully going to do five male questions and five female questions and we'll see how it goes. And then my next video after that will be uh, my Sunday sermon. And surprise, surprise, I'll be wearing a shirt, a tie and a suit jacket and a lovely pair of trousers because the sacrament will be laid out and I'm inviting Christ into my home. So I will want to look appreciative of that and I will be talking to people in a church setting rather than inviting you into my home for a lovely little chat. So... That concludes my lesson for today. I know it's been short and brief, but I think it's hit the nail on the head with regards to what we believe in the restored branch of Jesus Christ concerning baptism. There shouldn't be any misunderstandings there. Um, yet again, I tell everybody to keep safe, look after one another. We're living in such crazy days right now with stuff that's going on. We need our loved ones and our families more than ever, but more importantly than that, brothers and sisters, we need our God in our lives more than ever right now. If we are not praying, we should be. If we're not having prayer as a family, we should be doing that. If you're not reading your scriptures, get on with it. Read your scriptures. Invite Christ into your life because, boy, the world sure needs him right now. And it's turning its back on him. And we need to make sure that as individuals and as churches or organisations that we are embracing Christ as much as we possibly can. And extending the hand of fellowship to everybody. And um, that's what we're hopefully doing with these videos. So thank you for your time. Look after yourselves. And I'll see you again soon. Bye bye.